Welcome to our service for the third Sunday of the Easter season. We'll be uh, using uh, the service sheet that will be just below you here, so please do follow along inside it. Uh, we've had one or two issues with our music, um, nothing to really worry about, but we're trying to sort that out. So there's no music in the service as such. Uh, hopefully, by the time Sunday gets around, we'll be able to actually have some music up on the website for you to sing along to. Um, uh, I've also, there's been an awful lot of discussion in clergy circles about the whole celebrating of the Eucharist um, and it feels kind, it's sort of exclusive to uh, celebrate the Eucharist and for it really only be me to be receiving it. So this is not a Eucharistic service um, and uh, down the line what we might try and do is do something where um, if you found bread and, and wine in the house you could join along. Uh, obviously not be consecrated but uh, join uh, actually be included in the service so uh, I hope you enjoy uh, our service for, for today what there will there is uh, a bit, bit of liturgy and Nick will be helping me out again um, and then the, we will uh, there's a reading which uh, Julie has read for us Daphne's done some intercessions and we will be uh, there's a, a reflection that I've done uh, for this Sunday Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us join together in our prayers of penitence. Christ dies to sin once for all, and now he lives to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil, and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned and the way to life stands open. In our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still, faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. 
He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther, but they urged him strongly, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognised him, and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. One of the amazing things uh, I love about this gospel passage is the realness. We can really enter into the story. We have uh, Jesus appearing to, again, two more of the disciples that we're not so aware of, that we don't, don't really crop up much in the gospels. Uh, Clopas is named, uh, and we can assume that the other disciple with him is his wife. We know that Mary, the wife of Clopas was at, at the cross when Jesus died uh, and they go on a journey and this journey probably was where they were staying whilst the celebrations were happening in Jerusalem that weekend. It's quite a way to go, probably about 30 miles, so they, it was quite a travel and that's something that's quite hard for us to be doing at the moment to be traveling anywhere any journeying that we do is very restricted uh, so walking around the garden is pretty much all you've got uh, uh, as a, an opportunity unless you're going out and doing some exercise that you're allowed to do so they're going on this journey and they're talking to each other they're talking to each other about what they've gone through this weekend what has happened to them uh, and it's always really good to be able to share with someone what you're going through uh, the highs and lows of life but this really is a low again we come across that overwhelming grief of the loss of Jesus the loss and the, of the hope that Jesus was going to bring uh, so they're talking to each other about it and then Jesus appears. Somehow they're kept from actually seeing who he is. Maybe they did a double take and their human minds uh, weren't able to really understand the miraculous nature of what God was offering. Uh, often our human minds get in the way of seeing what God is able to do. Um, and we try and explain it away. So maybe they did a double take and no, it truly can't be him. It must be someone else. Um, 
And uh, he asked them, well, what are you talking about? You look so involved in what's going on. Uh, and they are kind of astounded. You mean you haven't heard what's been going on in Jerusalem this weekend? You haven't heard the stories of this man, Jesus? And then maybe they start to question themselves. Well, maybe it wasn't all of Jerusalem talking about it. Maybe it really was only their small group of people. And because they were in it and it was happening to them, they were overwhelmed by the situation but maybe it wasn't the whole of Jerusalem. So they explain to him who they thought Jesus was, what they were hoping Jesus was going to do. Uh, and, uh, and this is an opportunity for them to kind of unburden, an opportunity for counselling, which is something that a lot of us might be needing uh, as we go through this time of, of loss. Um, uh, an opportunity to really share and here we see Jesus he must have been tearing his hair out really they still haven't got it they still aren't able to come to terms with what he's done he's worked so hard this weekend and they really haven't got it so he starts with the scriptures and starts to explain to them and show them exactly what has happened this weekend what he's gone through and that it was set out that it was prophesied about and that it needed to happen uh, and here we see that actually jesus is able to explain it to them what needed to happen so they come to the end of their journey uh, and they persuade him to stay and they bring him in and he has a, a meal with them and here we see Jesus doing something that he may have done hundreds of times for them breaking bread so that is where they recognized him in the breaking of the bread and then it, it all becomes clear we get this miraculous nature of Jesus disappearing um, and actually they see that um, that actually there is something that was burning inside them all the way through their journey all the time that they'd been walking along that road they had knew that something special was happening so it's evening and they take the brave step to actually go back to Jerusalem, go back to the disciples to share with the disciples all that they had gone through. The fact that they had been chosen to meet the risen Lord and that it was important for the risen Lord to come and explain it to them. So often in our own journeys, whatever they look like at the moment, it's so important that we're able to share with each other. And maybe there's someone going along the journey with you, or maybe you're supporting someone on their journey. But it's important for us to share what God is doing in our lives, what Jesus has done for each and every one of us. And, you know, at some stage down the line, we'll be able to take that 30 mile journey back from Emmaus to Jerusalem when the lockdown is lifted. And we'll be able to share with people exactly what Jesus has done through this weird set of experiences that we're going through at the moment. And then we hope that we'll be able to say, as they do when they get back to the disciples the Lord is risen and he came and he appeared to us and he explained exactly what was going on and then that will be our opportunity to be able to say hallelujah Christ is risen he is risen indeed hallelujah happy Easter and I pray that you're able to enjoy what little there is 
of uh, the opportunities that we get but that God is speaking to you in what you're going through and that you will truly know what Jesus has done for us as we experience what the disciples have gone through through this Easter season. God bless you all and I look forward to the day when we're worshipping together again. Amen. An affirmation of faith. Let us declare our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As we continue to live in these extraordinary days, let us come together, wherever we may be, to share in a time of prayer. Our response this morning to the words, open our lives to Christ's risen power, is that we may walk the way of love with you. Companion God, we thank you that you do not leave us alone. Instead, drawing alongside us each day, Thank you that just as you met with your followers on the road to Emmaus, so in Christ you meet with us in the journey of life, always there in your resurrection power to guide, protect, comfort and support, each of us valued for who we are, chosen and dear to you. Open our lives to Christ's risen power that we may walk the way of love with you. What is it you are discussing as you walk? Companion God, we are discussing the news, the strange, frightening and unknown situations which face everyone in the world at this time concerning COVID-19. We pray for the leaders of the nations that they put aside their differences at this critical time and act with wisdom, justice, compassion and cooperation. We pray for the, those places in the world which have ceased to make the headlines, places of conflict, war, drought and famine. We pray for refugees and asylum seekers, all those on the fringes of society, companion God, we are wondering why these things have to be. Open our eyes to see Christ's risen presence wherever love overcomes hatred, hope destroys despair, faith challenges death. Open our lives to Christ's risen power that we may walk the way of love with you. What are you discussing as you walk? Companion God, we are sharing sad news about people we know and those we don't know. Those who are ill, especially those who contracted the COVID-19 virus and for those who have other serious conditions yet cannot be treated at this time. We pray for those who've been bereaved especially we bring before you those who must mourn their loved ones alone. We pray for those anxious about themselves or loved ones, for the lonely, the vulnerable. We are sharing sad news, wondering why these things have to be. Companion God, open our eyes to see you alongside those whose lives are burdened, painful, 
fearful or sad. Open our eyes to see Christ's risen presence, comforting, encouraging, calming, and sharing their loads. Open our lives to Christ's risen power, that we may walk the way of love with you. What is it you are discussing as you walk? Companion God, we talk about our communities, our families, our friends, our homes. We pray and give thanks for all those in our communities who work so tirelessly to keep us safe and walk the extra mile. We bring before you our dedicated medical staff, doctors, nurses, care workers, emergency services, the key workers in all walks of life, teachers, supermarket staff, postmen, the waste collectors, the drivers. We pray for the scientists working to discover and test vaccines to conquer this deadly virus. We pray for our loved ones and friends we cannot be with. We bring before you those who are vulnerable and especially those at risk from abuse and violence. We pray for all in our church family here at St Mary Magdalene's that they will know the comfort of your presence alongside them. We pray that we will be good neighbours looking out for and after each other. We bring before you, risen Lord, those who have passed beyond death and rejoice in your kingdom and are now at peace. Especially we remember those whose anniversary falls at this time. Charlie Jessup, John Bentley, Joyce Bothamley, Olive Hordle, Joan Habgood, Heidi Griffiths, Jean Varney, Greta James, June Paul and Cyril Marder. Open our lives to Christ's risen power, that we may walk the way of love with you. What is it you are discussing as you walk? Companion God, we are discussing the good news of Christ's life and death and resurrection, of the undying nature of your love for us and your offer of life in all its fullness. Help us to share this good news with those with whom we walk along life's paths, that together we may walk with you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Daphne. So we join together in our Lord's the prayer that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope. He has raised Jesus from the dead. God has claimed us as his own. He has brought us out of darkness. He has made us light to the world. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith. 
and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray for always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.